What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR. Sitting across from me this week and every week is the most interesting man in the world, Desra. The most interesting man in the room other than Brian, sure. And sitting next to me is Brian Paul. This sort of is the equivalent of my whole world, so this that, whole world. that works true. for me. <laughs> I mean, uh, this week and uh, every week on Why We Love PlayStation VR, we, we dive into the PlayStation VR archives, we, we choose a game at random, we pick it up with our sticky, chocolate-covered, cheese-laden fingers. Mm, cheesy. Chocolate and cheese. And then, and then we play the crap out of it. So you don't have to. We tell you whether it's worth your time and or money. Yes. Uh, what game did we pick this week, Desra? This week, we didn't just pick one game. We picked nine games in one. This is going to be a really long episode. Yeah, it's called Herocade. Oh, I remember Herocade. Yeah, I do too. Huh. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say something clever, but that might be spoiling my uh, opinion. So, so yeah. <laughs> All right. So... Right off the bat, let's mm-hmm. let's just get this out there. Yes, Herocade. Herocade came out back in April eighteenth. Hmm? Herocade. Well, if it was called Herocade, I'd yeah. be I'd be like <laughs> already rating this thing a one. I'd already be down. I'd be super duper thrilled. April eighteenth, two thousand seventeen. Herocade came out. Herocade. I really like that. Herocade. Yeah, uh, fifteen dollars. Yes, comes with nine games. Nine games. Nine games. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but it doesn't just. It doesn't just give, give you a buck fifty a game, uh, like a buck thirty something. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Quick math. I'm bad at bad at math. <laughs> I have calculators and I'm just refused to pull it out. Right. Listen. <clears throat> so it doesn't just give you a menu screen. No, it gets this really cool. No, I, I, I'm trying. I'm trying, Brian. But yeah, it's it it drops you into a world that they're trying to convince you is like falling apart. Well, no, it's actually. So it, it sets you up in a virtual museum of oh here's what they used to use you know and and the the narrator is this big floating blue ball in the middle, middle of the room, um, telling you that you're in a museum dedicated to the early days of VR so you're gonna get a chance to play these games right. but then something happens and you get stuck in the simulation, and so it's like every Japanese yeah. anime ever made yeah it's basically every virtual reality game so it's a, so or, it is Hirokate. Yeah, Hirokade. Nice. Yep. Uh, and so, and so I was like, all right, well, this is this is an interesting way to present your 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 nine right. yeah. games. And it's not like this was like nine games made by one dude. No, or nine games no. made by one company. No, this is nine different games and experiences uh, made by a wide variety of of publishers and whatnot. And you know, we could go to death on who did what and all, but you know what? We we have better things to do with our time. Yeah, honestly, um, we have we have games to talk about. Yeah, spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> so, do we want to just go kind of like experience by experience on this? We will. Okay. But so you get this hub world. Yes. And it's basically you get this circle in the center, and mm. lots of arms, right? Or All spokes. Or spokes. Or off of the hub. Off of the hub. Uh, it it's Sorry. like a it's like a nine to puss instead of an octopus. <laughs> Not Is that is that it? Yeah. I'm bad at math, kids. No calculators. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and so you have to like walk down these spokes, spikes. Wait, I just realized is that what Nonsugeshi Nonsuge- the kid's his name? I don't know. Nonopus? I don't know. Anyway, all right, spokes. Yes, yeah, spokes. Shout out, shout out to Nonsugeshi. <laughs> did, did we just figure out where your name came from? Um, but but they don't just let you walk. No, they make you teleport. Make you teleport. They make you click turn. Yeah. Click walk and click, click and teleport all the way to your destination. And, and it's a little bit, it's a little bit clumsy. It's a little bit clunky. Yep. And it also just plain old like doesn't work. So you get to the end of the <laughs> the strip, and then okay, it would be nice if there was like okay, get to this point, and you're gonna trigger it. Like no, you just kind of walk randomly, and then oh oh okay, I just got to the, yeah. the thing. It, it's a little messy. I, yeah. I I actually I hate saying this because they they did try to do some interesting creative things with this hub world sure uh every time you like you know beat a bunch of challenges it sort of changes um there is kind of a story i guess uh, we're not we're not gonna are we gonna i don't know no no Um, but it's interesting it's an interesting hub world and i but i will say as interesting as it is as it's too clunky to maneuver and i would have actually at this point just preferred a menu screen yeah all right yeah Let's knock these suckers out one by one and see if this game's worth your fifteen dollars. Okay, I'm not starting in any particular order because they're pre- kind of presenting you all equally. So we'll start with uh, Z Strike. 
Oh, well. Fighting zombies. How? What could go wrong with that? If you're curious to know what order they're in, we're starting from Brian's least favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this this is this is horrible. This is horrible. So they put you in a helicopter, right? It's, well, I think it's a drone. I think it's supposed to be a drone. They put you in a floating device or vehicle of some kind. Sure. Over the terrain that in for which you're shooting, mm-hmm. and it's like you're a mile away from your targets. Yeah. All right. Now, let me ask you this about the zombie apocalypse, This where this is obviously taking place. Sure. You don't really need to be more than, like, 10 feet off the ground to, to stay away from people who are 6 feet tall, right? Well, that's true, but if you do want to get that bird's eye view to be able to pick off people who are, like, 2 miles away from the bunker, then you need to get that bird's eye view. Yeah, I just want to kill zombies. I don't want to kill stick figures from a mile away. And that's sort yeah. of my biggest problem with this. It's just so boring. Yeah, it really, it's it's one of those, like, I, I do kind of disagree a little bit with Ryan on this. Like, I like the concept in general. I like the idea of being in charge of a drone or something like that, taking the bird's eye view of a zombie infestation and trying to, like, pick off groups of zombies yeah. instead of, you know, and, and basically there are two main games of ways of play. There's one, there's, like, a bunker that you're supposed to protect, not let any zombies get to it. Mm-hmm. The other one is just keep all the civilians alive um, for as long as you can. And with both of those, you know, yeah, you are in this kind of eagle eye view, and you're shooting either a small caliber rounds, a large caliber, like a 50 cal cannon, and uh, Hellfire missiles. Each of them have varying amounts of splash damage. And you're basically trying to knock them out to protect the people. Uh, it's a really interesting concept, I think, but it definitely suffers in the execution. Uh, Which so, might be the theme for this episode. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's definitely uh, so, something that we should probably say about this, is that uh, is that for this game, and I, and I'm gonna say a lot of the other games, mm-hmm. the more you play them, the better they get, because because yeah. at, you're you seem so limited at the beginning of a lot of these games. Right. With this one, you, you're allowed to shoot, and then you just have to wait. And then you mm-hmm. shoot, and then you have to wait. But eventually. The more zombies you kill, the more credits you get, and then you can upgrade all these things, right. and you can increase your rate of fire. You can increase, I think, the the, the power of the fire. I, yeah, rate of fire, yeah. clip size, all, basically all the different modifiers you can have in any kind of you know uh, gun simulator. So it gets better. Well, but that's the thing; it just gets easier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it doesn't really get better. Um, and that's the thing; like, there's no strategy. There's no like. You know, having to make the choice between, okay, I'm going to use the Hellfire here and take out this big group. And it's just, they just kind of keep coming and that's it. Well, the next game has to be better. Sure. Oh, yeah. So moving on. Uh, Space Bit Attack. I was wrong. (laughs) I hate this game. Yeah, this is uh, (laughs) supposedly like a, a... um, oh my god! Space invaders, Space invaders. In wow, VR. my brain just stopped. Yeah, yeah, that's, I've got you covered. That's a great concept, right? Space invaders in VR. Wow. What could be wrong with that? Right? How how great would it be if you're inside your little ship and there's yeah. just ships everywhere that you have to shoot down? Um, see VR invaders. Anyways, um, hmm. sure. but yeah, but here's the thing: it's like they're not everywhere. <laughs> they're coming at you in sort of like a wall, and you have two pieces of let's call it cover, and you can move around. Which is great, but you can't move around everywhere. You can move in just a very small, perhaps sort of rectangle. Yeah, they, they don't yeah. give you. They don't give you a lot of uh, freedom of movement. The, yeah. the 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 ships that are coming at you, very space invaders structure. They're, they're literally just like moving mm-hmm. left, come at you, moving right, come at you. Yep. And it's 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 first of all, it's mind-numbingly slow at first. Yes. You're the rate of fire in which you attack these things is mind-numbingly slow. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't. It, there's no indication on when you can recharge your weapons mm-hmm. or when when you're able to fire again, and it, and then suddenly, like four or five stages in, it's impossible yeah. and you die. Yeah, like th- there's no there's no in between. It's super duper easy. Then it's impossible. You die, and I've never actually succeeded in getting the high score that's required for you to complete this challenge. Yeah, that's something we should mention. With each game, um, there is like when you fire it up and there's kind of the main screen. It tells you what you're supposed to hit to sort of unlock the, the the next piece of the story for this kind of overarching story uh, some of the some of them are stupidly easy to get some of them are near impossible yeah. um, there's this, no, this is a near impossible one I've yeah. played it probably 30 times yeah I've gotten the exact same score every 30 times it's like it's just busted yeah 
So it doesn't make any sense. And there's a, I, I'm going to say right now, this game is the reason there's no online leaderboards in this game because <laughs> then it would just be proof positive yeah. that no one can do it if you can do it, if you've done it by any chance whatsoever, if you've succeeded in this challenge. Comment below. I want to know how, how, but also I bow down to you, yeah. sir or madam. <laughs> and also who hurt you? Um, so speaking of things that are broken and awful, mm. sisters. Oh, the game. Yes. Yeah, no. <laughs> Heard. I, I don't have any, so right. I would Same, know. same. Yeah. I, but I've, I've met other people's sisters and... <laughs> eh. Um, so, so <laughs> do I have to edit that out? Sisters Sisters is like, a, what, five minutes at, at most? I guess. So here's the thing. Um, <laughs> I, out of all the games I played, I fired this up. I actually had some hope for this. I had heard things about Sisters before. So I was like, oh, maybe there's kind of a Did, hidden didn't gem. Didn't win an award, you said? Yeah. Uh, in Sundance 2016, it was a, a selection. So it's not an award. It just meant, hey, notice this. Um, I fired it up. You're in this room. I'm kind of walking in circles for a little bit, shining my flashlight at things. The little doll move. Not walking in circles. Spinning no, in spinning circles. Spinning in circles. Right. Good <laughs> just, point. Just clarifying. Yep. Um, you know, the little doll moved and I heard sounds and the next thing I know, a trophy popped up and I won the game. Okay, so this is interesting, right? Because yeah. this is a game, quote unquote, it's an experience. This is definitely an experience. Legit, less than five minutes long. Mm -hmm. uh, you hear noises, you're supposed to like investigate the noises. Like, oh, I heard some creaking over here and you like shine your flash over there. I wonder what's over there, right? And then you turn around and like something's different. The doll's gone or, or missing and... Oh. And whatever, <laughs> and uh, and and then at the very end, spoilers for the five minute experience that you should have played back in April. Mm. The, there's a doll who that kind of appears right in front of you and is supposed to scare the crap out of you. Des it didn't happen to Des, the guy who you can't scare anyway. Yeah. They didn't even try. They were like, "Well, we're, just gonna, <laughs> we're not even going to attempt this one." They've heard <laughs> the legends of Desra. Maybe I should change my PlayStation name to some. <laughs> The Legend of Desra. I want to play this game. I would love that if they actually like writing code like if Desra, then no jump scare. <laughs> um, so, so this is this is a conversation we had on the Gamescast recently, and I'd love yep. to have it again with you some other time. Okay, but it just kind of proves a point how difficult it is to make a game in VR because we were talking to uh, I was talking to um, what are the other people that work at this channel? It's Jeremy and Michelle. Jeremy and Michelle. I was talking to them. About, we love you guys so much. Thank you know, you. it's been a really long day. I apologize. Uh, we're only three games into a nine. To game everyone, game. oh, it's it's just gonna be a ninety minute episode. Oh. I hope you hope you're all in for the long haul. Strap in, folks. Yep. Uh, so they're, they're like they're like cheering right now. Can you hear them? <laughs> He's waiting for like fifty five more minutes. Of, okay. Um, and so we were talking about the Stranger Things experience. Okay. Okay. And in the Stranger Things experience, also about two minutes long, not okay. long at all, there's like a string of Christmas lights that light up. And you're yeah. supposed, and the game is basically telling you, hey, follow along. Okay. Right? And then through the hole in the wall, you'll see the, the monster walk by. Right. Okay. So this is the game being, trying to like walk them through this very short two minute experience. Yeah. Both of them following the lights going on. Both of them. I watched this. Yeah. Lost interest. <laughs> Halfway through the lights turning on and just like, uh, what's over here? Yeah. I was like, well, you just missed the jump scare. So here in Sisters. Okay. Again, that must be what happened. Yeah. Here again, it must be so difficult to make a game in VR mm -hmm. when you're allowed to just look wherever you want to all the time. Yeah. This is, it's it's baffling that this, all this stuff keeps happening to us. Yeah. It's a, and that's, I mean, I, I don't know, guys. Just Sister, sisters, I, I scare easily in VR. Yeah. This looks like a PlayStation Two game, and I gotta say, when I when I didn't know what was gonna happen, when I didn't know what the scares were gonna be like, mm -hmm. I was I was cringing the whole time. Yeah, I, my my ex was sitting on the couch next to me, just laughing hysterically. <laughs> I'm like, this is really scary in here. Don't make yeah. fun of me. Oh, and here's the thing too. So let's say whether I decide to to buy this. Um, and you said, you know, oh, you should have played this back in April. Actually, you could have played this about a year before that. True. Um, it's, uh, it was a mobile game first. So for Google Cardboard, whatever. And it's still available for that for free. So, you know. Okay, next. Just doing some quick math. Fourteen ninety nine divided by 9 equals $1.67 per game. All right. Well, okay. we can count this one out because you can get it for free. So, <laughs> uh, right. so next up. Next up. Turkey Shoot. No, Alpha Turkey Shoot. Alpha Turkey Shoot. Alpha Turkey Shoot. All right. 
so much fun. I hated this one at the beginning. At the beginning, okay. This is one of those, the more you play it, the more you like it. Yeah, um, I apparently, th- this game made me realize something about myself. I am a sucker for shooting gallery games. Oh, yeah. Um, th- and that's what this is. There's these, basically these cutouts of turkeys on sticks. Mm-hmm. I mean, this, all right, this is not graphically mind-blowing. It was uh, like PlayStation 1.5. Yeah, but these these cutouts of turkeys on sticks kind of basically just move over the hillside towards you. Oh my god. That and I think it's just a person making that. <laughs> I actually, I if, you, if you listen close, there are some like actually they're using turkey calls too. But yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, it's it's like obnoxiously. But repetitive. it's so like stress inducing because at the higher levels of this game, this is one of the most like oh my god, holy like they're there's coming nothing at you from all directions seriously, like, uh, and there's nothing more chilling than the dead eyed paper cutout <laughs> just moving towards you, and it's like now it's at your feet and you're dead, especially like. In the earlier levels where the reload time is super slow, yep. and it's like just creeping, super, and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, it's it's so much fun. It, re- um, it really is, and, yeah. and and I like I said, I hated it at the beginning, but the because re- the reload time sucks. There's no aiming reticle at first, mm-hmm. and these are all things you buy. You upgrade your reload time, you buy your aiming reticle, and yeah. like, better guns too, right? Yeah, there's the uh, the basically nine millimeter um, a shotgun and a. Uh, it's like an AK-47 knockoff. Like, I think like a Turkey 47. Perfect. And one thing, here's weird. I noticed about this game yeah. and um, another one we're going to talk about, Jurassic World. The detail on the guns is crazy sharp. <laughs> it's it's like, I mean, compared to everything else, like this is cartoony, like is it PlayStation 1? But you look at the gun, there's like scratches in the metal. You can see the safety triggers. It's like, okay, this must be an off-the-shelf asset they yeah, got somewhere. Exactly, that's yeah. exactly what I was thinking. They probably bought a bunch of Unity assets and yeah. just, yeah. That's, I, you got to figure. So it's, it's a very weird clash of like graphical styles. Yeah, but the, this one definitely gets better the more you play it, and it's and it is a lot of fun and a little strange that they don't tell you this, but the different difficulty levels that you choose are actually different environments, totally too. different maps. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you 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 start it up and you think it's just this one place where you're stuck at, mm-hmm. but no, there's there's three completely different places, and it's yeah, yeah it, it changes up the gameplay a little bit. And the last one ended up being my favorite. You're cornered in a dark alley. And it's yeah. snowing. It's like it was yeah. Yeah. Um, so definitely great. Like I found mus- found myself like full on. You know, I had to stand up. I'm in like military. You know, police stance. Bop, bop, bop. Yeah. Is great. this the first? One, is this the first one of the of the game? The group that we completely endorse? Yes. All right. Absolutely. So, wholeheartedly. So so far, we recommend this game for. We recommend Hero Kid for a dollar sixty seven. Okay. Is that is that is that fair to say? Yeah. But there's one game. Yes. So far. Okay. And we and this is the third one or fourth one we've been through. Uh, it'd be the fourth. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Okay, good. What's next? What's the next game? Four hundred five Road Rage. I like four hundred five Road Rage. I have to admit this. Yeah, it's. I mean, out of the available options, it's not one of the worst ones, which is about as strong as I feel about it. Uh, I mean, there, there, there's some fun to be had. Yep. Uh, you definitely like. Uh, basically, what it is, it is a driving game. Third person. You Third see, person. You play from outside the car. Right, so it's the first driving game I've been able to play them in VR and not get sick at. So oh, that's excellent hey, to hear. That's that's great. Nice. Um, you steer by turning your head, which I wish you could yeah. use the analog stick. Yeah, uh, that's the weird thing. You've got, I mean, you're holding the DS4. Mm-hmm. You use it for other stuff like you're accelerating a brake and eventually firing whistles. Mm-hmm. So you know why not give us the option of steering that way too? Yeah. Very strange, but yeah. but still fun. And so you're basically navigating mm. your way through traffic, and you just have to go as far as you can. Yeah, and there's options to go uh, one lane on a one lane road. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you just go you're driving with a bunch of people going the same direction as you. Yep. You can do a dual lane uh, or p- cars coming the opposite direction. You get more points the longer you drive in the opposite lane. Of course, you get more points for close calls. Yep, and um, for being in the uh, diamond lane. Yep, of course. Uh, so what I what I like about this is that it's it's addictive because it's you just keep it's a, this very simple quick gameplay loop mm-hmm. where you play and you only make it 10 seconds the first time you do it and then you're like i can obviously beat that yeah. and then the second time you do it and you only make it five and you're like what, what just happened I can, <laughs> and, and you just yeah, i can i can do this and every time you do it you accrue more points and you mm-hmm. get more coins or whatever it is and then you can start upgrading your vehicle you can go faster you can do um the the gun is the best thing yeah <laughs> uh, where you like literally fire missiles at oncoming cars they yeah. don't blow up they just to like launch up Boop. in the air and it, it looks hilarious yeah but i will say this about that this just makes me want an actual burnout game 
for PlayStation VR. There you go. Yeah. Because racing into oncoming traffic, even with these cartoony graphics in mm-hmm. third person, it's still a rush. Right? Like, my heart's pounding. I'm like, oh, come on, I can do this. And, like, you know, those close calls, you're, like, like holding your breath. Mm-hmm. It's it's so much fun. And it doesn't even look remotely as good as Burnout did on, like, PlayStation 2. So did you jump the first time you crashed into something? Oh, I jump all the time. Yeah, because I was I was driving along because it looks very blocky and cartoony. So you figure, oh, it's going to be cartoon kind of physics. So I'm like, all right, if I, you know, I'm doing 70, if I glance into this car, it'll be fine. No, you stop dead and it's you're, it's, you're gone. It's all over. Yeah. Yep. Um, so you, there is a lot, like, if you really want to get to, like, ninja level on this there's a lot of just like slamming on the brakes accelerating through and you can't just hit the pedal and go the whole time right so it's, it's yeah it's fun there can, can we endorse this one i think we can endorse this one all yeah. right all right <laughs> that's two of the five all right so mm. gumi no yumi all right, i quit <laughs> uh hirokade how, presents how gumi many, no yumi how many times have we seen almost this exact puzzle game in different forms yeah, well, and the thing is, it's not a bad concept for a puzzle game. Nope. Um, it's, it's basically there's, hey, uh, this little fox character, and you have to move these gummy pieces around, and you have to get the gummy pieces to those squares of the right color. Yep. And you only have, well, it's not that you only have so many moves, but you're rewarded for the lower number of moves. Right. You know, like, like Brian said, a very common sort of puzzle game uh, mechanic. Here's some major problems, though. Number one. So this is a game where the number of moves you use is really important. Why are the controls so sensitive that if I accidentally glance my finger against the thumbstick, my character just moved three spaces? Uh, it, and even worse, there's a reverse, like take back your last move Sure, well, button. And, and that would be fine, right? Yeah. Oh, I made a mistake, go back. But, but it actually costs you moves to, to reverse your character. Yes, so if you, let's say, you know, there's hundreds of moves that you have for this level, and you made 10 wrong moves so you want to back up 10 well you're not back to 100 you're now down to 80 yeah it doesn't make any sense yeah but that's not the worst part of it brian what's your favorite part well just like the rest of playstation vr library i hate click turning yeah but i've never hated click turning more than i've hated click turning in this game (laughs) because all this the click turning does is it rotates the camera 90 degrees Mm -hmm. and you might say well that sounds pretty helpful and it would be if I could smoothly turn the camera. Sometimes you can't see what's behind a wall or an obstacle. And so you do, it's like absolutely required that you move the camera. But as soon as you like move the analog stick, it goes boom. And then suddenly you're like, I don't yeah. even know where my character is. Dude, it's that was so, way too fast. It's so disorienting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a delay. Yeah. Oh, I forgot it's about not the delay. Boom, it's not boom, it's... And it's, it, it, but even once it happens, it's so disorienting where you're like, I don't even know which one of these my character is. Yeah. I don't remember which direction I was heading. I don't remember. I don't even know. Yeah. I, I can't. It's I, like I, in a game like this, you want to be able to like smoothly move the camera as little or as much as you want to mm-hmm. so that you can see from every perspective. The, the second I had to start moving the camera around, I was just like, I can't even do this anymore. I think it's literally they did not want to do the rotation animation. That's horrible. Because it actually grays out. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, this so. is this is in my opinion. I was wrong about Z Strike. This <laughs> is the worst game in the collection because even even say they had good turning controls or even good movement controls. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've played this so many times before. This isn't this isn't even like a cool tech demo for something right. that could be bigger and better. This is just like mind numbingly yeah. boring. I, I've played this game before. I swear I have. God only knows where. I feel like the original Nintendo had plenty of games like this yeah and the thing is like so vr doesn't bring any to the, anything to this you know we go see our review of bloody zombies where we talk about a brawler like why do this in vr well it turns out it looks really cool they, they do a lot of fun stuff with the fact that it's in vr and there's a new 3d perspective they don't do any of that with this so yeah uh moving on jurassic survival <sighs> have you ever played a game yes and you get so bored, like, not just in the first few minutes, but after patiently, patiently, patiently waiting for it to get good, mm-hmm. that eventually you just let the damn enemies kill you. We were both literally bored to death in we, this game. We, we just, we, yeah, it, this is yeah. this is horrible. It doesn't, the challenge never increases in this game. Okay, no. tell, tell people what this game okay, is. Okay, so basically you're, 
well, apparently there was a crash and you were the survivor of a crash in a Jurassic Park sort of place. <laughs> yeah. And of course, we can't use any of those names because we didn't license it. Right. So it's the Jurassic Survival. Um, but it's very clearly one of the Jurassic Park Jeeps that's knocked over behind you. Yeah. Um, and then there are three enemy types. That's it. If there are more, let us know because it means you have way more patience than we do. It means you spend hours with this game. Yeah. Long past the point of boredom. Yeah. Long past the point of where we gave up. There's a little Compsognathius, little guys. There's the medium generic raptor sort of thing. She's using the full name. Compsognathius? That's what they are. They're compies. The compies. I know. Yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm Jurassic Park. Compies all the way. Oh, yeah, right. Sorry. I just knew that. No, I, I know. That's why we <laughs> so, keep you around. Um, and then there's a T-Rex. And I, I will say... After, you know, the first few waves, you're fighting just the compies and the, the raptor or whatevers. Um, I don't think they're quite raptors, but I don't know. I think it's what they're then going for. The first time, like, the T-Rex shows up, yeah. you're like, oh, crap. Right. I, and I, all I have is, you know, at the beginning, all you have is this 9mm. And you're just unloading into this thing as it's coming at you. And it's just really terrifying and great. Until, like, you don't actually kill it right away and it attacks you. And just the tiniest little nudge of your health bar comes off. It's like impossible to lose at this game. It, re- it really is. And I, I, I want this game to be harder. I want like if if that T Rex shows up and takes a swipe at you, you should be dead. Yeah. A three story animal bites you. It's it's game over. So here's my here's my I can't believe I'm saying this is my biggest issue with this game because there's so many issues with this game. But my biggest issue with this game is they give you this big playing field, right? Where like you can see copies coming from like. Like almost like a quarter mile away, they yeah. are far out in that field. Oh yeah, but you are stuck in one stationary location, right next to all these bushes in the in the down jeep. Yeah, it's like in knowing full well that things will come up right behind you. Why aren't we moving into the middle of this field? Yeah, so we can see things coming from it at us from all directions. It's it's ridiculous. It, like it, I, I understand wave based shooters. Mm. But don't put me in a stupid place to stand. Right. Put me in the middle of the field and let me see everything from all yeah. directions. Like it, it takes you have literally seconds to mm-hmm. to hear the noise of something coming out of the bushes behind you and turn yeah. around and start firing. Just step three feet away. Give yeah. us a little more work, room to work with. But now you're stuck and it sucks. I, I will say that the sound design is kind of a little bit cool because there's no music and if you are absolutely dead silent you can hear that noise coming from a little further away yeah and 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 be ready for it but it's not much warning and when i was playing it um i had some serious glitching issues uh one of them which wasn't very serious it was more aesthetic but still a little disconcerting uh my nine millimeter my clip would just be hovering like two to three feet virtual feet sometimes sideways sometimes this way and it wouldn't actually interfere with the the function it was just odd uh but then at one point i was just trying to think it's like okay this is a wave shooter but the pacing is is actually kind of interesting it's not just like one and one and one there's there's moments of just nothing happening where you can get yourself all nerved up that's true then i realized no (laughs) nothing's been happening for a while now and i'm just like you know i'm firing clips in the air just like okay maybe i have to trigger something and then eventually after probably two to three minutes I, I look, started looking around, and there's a compi that's just kind of frozen by my feet. So the game is basically waiting for me to kill that to start the next stream, but it's stuck there. You can't kill it. Well, no, I, I was able to. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, but I was just well, really. At least there's that. <laughs> if I didn't look and see that, I would have just been sitting there in silence for who knows how long. So we're not going to recommend that one. <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, I'm a little more positive on it than Brian was, but yeah, it's not. I'm I'm really sad about that one because that's the one that was the one they showed screenshots of, but mm-hmm. before while I was waiting to download Hero Cave for the yep. first time, and I was like, oh sweet, even if this is like just like a crappy Brookhaven experiment like ripoff where you get to shoot dinosaurs instead of zombies, yeah. I'm sold. And I mean, I think that's what they were going for. Yeah. And no, not not good. What's the, what's next? and I guess I didn't finish that. Oh. The first time you see the T Rex, great and scary. The fifth time, it's just. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna. I'm going to say maybe not great and scary. I'm going to say better than the other things. All right. So next, second from last. Wow. We're we're trucking along. This is fantastic. Just when I was losing interest. Moving right along. Are you still with us? (laughs) Another game that was actually available uh, independently uh, by itself, um, not for PSVR, but I think for other Mm -hmm. systems, Dread Halls. Oh, by far. My favorite game in this collection. Spoilers. Sorry. 
It's just it, this isn't for Des. He didn't. This, this game is not for Des. He didn't like Marvels either, so keep that in consideration. <laughs> Nobody likes Marvels. I love Marvels. Where's Marvels two? I'm asking. I'm begging. I'm pleading. <laughs> also, go play Marvels one. It's awesome. <laughs> Um, Sponsored in part by Marvels. Yeah, if someone gets me a Marvels t-shirt for Christmas, I hate you. Uh, so. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, obvious, right. this is, going, is this going up after Christmas? I think um, it's going up after Christmas. Is it? All right. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you're in the clear. But for but for okay. Christmas 2018, that's 2018. all you're getting. All the game pads are going to get fantastic. you. Fantastic. Marvels, what the hell is... Right. <laughs> so okay, so Dread Halls. So Dread good. Halls. So good. Uh, so it's a it's dungeon a crawler. Dungeon crawler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will say better than Crystal Rift. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of I'm I, for me this is sort of neck and neck with Crystal Rift. Okay. Like I, I sort I I enjoyed Crystal Rift for what it was and I enjoyed yeah. this for what it was. All right. I will say that Crystal Rift tried to be scary on occasion, mm-hmm. but the only way they could do that was by like creating like silly things that like would fly at your face. Yes. Um. And in this, there's there's like this. I don't know if they they name it. It's but it's like a demon, basically a like shadow demon sort of thing. Yeah, I didn't play long There's enough a, to a find witch, out if that has a name. A witch or something. I yeah. forget what it is. But but it's funny because you can hear it, right? So mm-hmm. sometimes you'll you in in really it, it only kills you if you look at it. Yeah, this is this is phenomenal, right? This is like Blair Witch shit. Right. Um, and so and so I'd be in a room and I'd hear it and I go, I'm like I'm really scared to move right now. <laughs> I'm like, is it right behind me? Is it right next to me? Yeah. I'm like, and so, so then you start like strafing around the room, like <laughs> just like walking sideways because you're like, I can see in front of me. I know it's not there. Please, God, don't let it be next to me. Yeah. <laughs> and and these are the kind of things that get me because okay. like I'm like because I can hear it. The sound design I yep. think is pretty good in this game, and it's like I feel like it's breathing down my neck, and I'm scared because I've turned. I've been like, oh my God, I hear it, and I turn. It's right in front of me. I'm like. <laughs> and I just like start running down out of the oh yep it's yep Brian, so, Brian gets scared in VR easily so basically it's an Enderman um why, why do yeah. I ever get your references it's it's from Minecraft it's uh, basically okay. one of one of the only bad guys that's out during the daytime and if you look at it it comes and attacks you okay and so the way you play is just there you go look at the ground also now yep. now, there you go. now Des has explained it for everybody in like a, a three syllable word yeah yeah but but there's Dreadhall's has a a story mode i guess you'd call it mm-hmm. where like you, you you're forced to like go around and collect things and, and bring them back and like you know it's sort of just you know keys and like levers and just yeah. try and get to the next area but there's also like an endless mode mm-hmm. where it's just procedurally generated levels yeah and i was like well so th- if this is your thing if this is your jam if you're digging on dread halls you can pretty much play it forever you, you're not going to want to but I'm, i am going to say that this is it for me it was it was a lot of fun and I think I said in my review, it was basically like worth the asking price alone. Right. We've come a long way since April. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't think it's worth the asking price alone, but I definitely think it's worth more than a couple of these other games put together. Yeah. I will say that there is one nice little bit that I did appreciate. There are these um, these uh, faces, carved statues on the wall. It's actually, if you look, it's the, kind of the logo for the game. Mm-hmm. And I think they call themselves sisters. And you can go up to it and it costs you money, but you can ask a question. And there's three questions, and you can only ask one. And the kind of cool thing is that question might not ever pop up again. So you ask it now, or you don't find out the answer, which I, I kind of like that. I, I like it when a game makes you make a choice and makes you stick with the consequences of that choice. So that's that's kind of cool. That's a nice nice little bit there. Um, so the last game, oh. Pony Runner. So it's about a guy with a couple of wives who's trying to get through them all. Holly Runner? Um, I'm following. Yeah? Yeah. No? Yeah. No, sorry. I I don't know. I, that, that's the, I'm, I'm trying to have some fun with these games, guys. Com- comment below if you thought that was funny. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? We didn't mention, actually, uh, gosh, a few of these games, like Jurassic Survival, uh, Turkey Shoot, and things like that, you can actually use move controllers with. Yeah. We, oh, we, oh, we yeah. didn't even talk about uh, control schemes on these games. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, which how how many can you? It's like, it, I think you na- named them. Yeah. Okay, maybe Al- that's it. Alpha Turkey Hunt. Yep. Uh... Jurassic, Jurassic survival, and yeah. maybe that's it. Okay, well, glad we covered that. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so but now he, here's the thing: when when we talked about like four or five road rage, mm. they they forced you to use your head to turn. Yeah. Uh, and Polly Runner, the, so you got choices. Yeah. Th- not, yeah. This is a 3D uh, space flying. It's an infinite runner. Infinite runner, but it's in two dimensions instead of just one dimension. 
trapped in two dimensions. Yeah, well, it's you because you can move back and for, well, you can move back and forward, but you're also moving. Oh, okay, straight, I got you. Right? So, so you you can, you can move on the X Y right. plane. Yeah, and the you're you're, you're moving <laughs> right. Sorry, you're moving forward, but you're not in control of that speed. You're just being forced to move at that speed, but you can move left and right. I'm versus totally with you now. A, a traditional infinite runner where you're moving forward, but you can only jump. Okay. Right. Sure. Um. Okay. It, it looks it looks a little bit like uh, I mean if you guys played Race to Sun that was another PlayStation okay. VR game. Yep. Uh, I was thinking Zaxxon, but sure. It's very Zaxxon like as well, um, especially with the. Uh, it's a very simple like uh, Poly Runner. Obviously, is a reference to not the number of wives the pilot has, but the the graphics. It's a poly- polygonal Wasn't style. The number of husbands. Right. You think of, you think a woman could fly a ship? Oh, dude! You have to edit that out. <laughs> that, that's. <laughs> Can we keep up Brian's misogyny score at the top? Just kidding, guys. I'm kidding everybody. Girls, guys, yeah. love you all. Yeah, they've already lost interest. Oh. Yeah. Adorable. I, I try. Adorable. I try. Okay. So, Polly Runner. Um, so, yeah, there's there's three different control schemes. One is basically where you look. Yep. Just kind of looking your head. The other is tilting your head. Hmm. And the other is just using the uh, the dual shock. Dual shock all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I, I I kind of, it's weird. Like the looking wasn't great, but the tilting, I kind of got a little zen about it. It was yeah. kind of. You and Dave relaxing. Station. Dave yeah. Dave Station agrees with you on this one. Uh, back okay. in the day when we were all playing this game and streaming it, he was uh, he's a big fan of this one. I think this one might have been one of his favorites, and yeah. he was using his head and loved it. And I was like, nope, sorry, analog stick. Um, it gets. Very difficult, very quickly. Oh my God! Yes. By the third, if you even make it past the second level, which is yep. very hard the first time, and I, and I will say a little of this is the game's fault. The okay. difficulty level, because it's very tough to gauge yes. how far up off yep. the ground things are. You can't really tell if some of them are obstacles. So, so I, I do, I do blame the game to a certain extent for the difficulty of of the game because there's a there's difficulty. And then there's unintended difficulty. Yeah. And I feel like this game has a little too much unintended difficulty. But I do feel like once you get the gist of it, um, you, you start seeing these things as they're supposed to be. And, and you do. You fall into like a zen state. Yeah. And, and you just and you blast through. I remember the first time I made it to level three. I think I also made it to level five. Okay. You know, so it's like kinda, yeah. once you get it, you just get it. And then yeah. you're done with it because you're, you know. Yeah, that's the uh, thing. There's no real... I mean, the, the difficulty level increases due to the terrain. But it's not like, you know, where the other games where you can... You know, increase. You know, use money and sort of upgrade your ship or things like that. There's no, you don't upgrade the ship. It's just you do it again and again and again until you get it. Yeah, yeah. Are we recommending this one? I'm not not recommending it. I don't know. All right, we're gonna give this one a pass. We're gonna say sure. yes on this. Okay. Um, but but only a mild yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mildly entertaining. So we'll give it a. We'll, we'll we'll say yes. This is worth it. Um, and that and that's all nine games. That's it. Oh, we're in we're in trouble. So. So usually at this point, we we, we we rate the game. We rate it on a we rate it with on, on a one to three scale. Right. And somebody recommended we do it on a one to five scale. And I said that's fine. What are the other two numbers recommend? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You want something in between the three? I feel like yeah. I feel like one, two, and three doesn't even make any sense. Like it could be A, B, and C. It could be here's our three choices. Right? Yeah, I think because we're just we're just sort of like talking about three different. Uh, verdicts yeah verdicts of the game so it's not like a one game is a necessarily a better game than a two game we're just kind of yeah we're thinking about oh, no, but in our opinion yeah they are well yeah yeah, yeah. I, I guess yeah but it's it's more of a value proposition yeah. because uh so just for those of you who are just joining us a uh, one means oh my god drop everything you need to buy this uh if you own a psvr it has to be in your library yep. uh two it's okay you know if um if you got you know a couple bucks burning a hole in your pocket uh, or, if or, it's on or on sale, sale yep. or, or something like that. Yeah, sure. Or maybe it's something that it's not for everybody, but that one person out there, it's probably for you. A three is, oh my God, don't buy this. Uh, friends don't let friends buy crap. We cannot reward these people for making this. So, what is what is, what is Hirokade's hue? Is it a one? Is it a two? Or is it a three? Oh, I thought we were going with Hirokade. Well, Hirokade. Um, but uh, I got <laughs> this is a, this is a tough one. I'm gonna say a two, provided it's a really good sale. <laughs> yeah, well, because I, I, I'm totally gonna agree with you. Yeah, it would be ludicrous for us to say this is a one. No, but, no, absolutely not. But there's enough entertainment value here that if you can get it for the right price, yeah, uh, at least 
uh, one, two, three, four of these games we think are worth your time. Yeah, if, if I could buy Alpha Turkey Hunt by itself and make sure those developers got 100% of the money I'm giving them, I would, yes, thumbs up. Absolutely. So, four four games of the nine mm -hmm. worthwhile. Okay. We, we've said that each game, on average, if you bought the collection as a whole together, would cost you $1.67 a piece. Okay. So, the only way to make this fair mm -hmm. is to say... Well, we only want you guys to pay for the good games. Hmm. So, if we're if you're only going to pay for the good games, how cheap does this sale have to be so to make this worthwhile? Times four is six dollars and sixty eight cents. Okay. So if you can get this game for six dollars and sixty eight cents, <laughs> then it's a thumbs up. It might even be a one at that price. No, uh, for me, Dread Halls. Is, mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun with Dread Halls. There's a lot of replayability. We said Alpha Turkey Hunt's awesome. 405 Road Rage is fun. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and the last one was oh Poly Runner, which is okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, the the interesting thing is that this this game developer or this publisher decided to put these all together in a package and charges fifteen dollars for them. Yes. Which a dollar sixty seven a piece is kind of an amazing deal for nine games, even if they're like. I mean, really, like, unless you're like very active on Steam, when the yeah. hell do you ever see these kind of prices on the PlayStation Network? Yeah, that's true. So I'm a little curious to think, mm -hmm. what would have happened if this developer took all nine of these games, didn't create the hub world, and just literally put each of them on the PlayStation Store for, let's just say, two ninety nine? They could have made a killing back in April. Yeah. For calling these games. Separate titles for three dollars a piece. Well, that's because we didn't know anything better back then. We didn't. We, we, <laughs> it was the dark days of VR. Trust me, there was very little going on. Yeah, it, it's kind of ironic that this game sets itself up as a museum of what <laughs> games were like in the early days of VR, because that's kind of what it is at this point. Yeah. So, uh, so so kudos to the the publisher for not doing the thing I just suggested, because yeah. they really could have put all of these games up on the store on the same day, charge $3, because you look at these and you go, $3, even if it's horrible, it's only $3. Yeah. But but yeah, as we just pointed out, we don't even think most of these are worth $1.67. Yeah, I have a hard time even saying, like, you should buy this at any price, because um, <laughs> I don't want someone to say, D what were you thinking, Des? Yeah. You know, I, they're, they're cool, but honestly, that money can go a lot further in some other places. But for a so. dollar sixty-seven, like yeah. half of the price of a cup of coffee, like <laughs> you too can support <laughs> your indie, indie debate game developers. Patreon.com/slash Without Pro Games. You hey. can also support us for like. There's not... a better use of your money. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know what we're trying to say. Yeah. There, there's some value here. It's not all trash, but more than half of it is is trash. It's a steaming pile. Yeah. All right, we got This was a long episode. We yeah. got to move on. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you comment below. You tell us if you enjoyed HeroCade or what were your favorite games. Did you like some of the games that we didn't? Did you hate some of the games that we liked? Did you were you smarter than us and you didn't buy it? <laughs> let us know in the comments below and let us know what other games you want us to talk about. As always, for why we love PlayStation VR, I'm Brian Paul. I'm Desra, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>